group experiences can be really exciting like this, right? We're all in the boat together. You're rowing down and battling this river, uh, all working in the same, uh, at the same thing for the same goal. And then you turn around, you realize Steve's back there, not even paddling him, and even an oar in his hand. Doesn't even have the respect to have a paddle in his hand to pretend that he's doing some work, right? And that's pretty typical for group work as well. So in this video, we want to take a look at some ways that we can confront and prevent social loafing. Now, what is social loafing? Well, let's take a look. Social loafing is a phenomenon in which individuals exert less effort when working as a group than when working independently. So, you know, for some reason, when people get in that group, they feel like, oh, I don't really need to do all of the work. Now, I don't need to do as much work as I would have on my own because other people are here to pick up the slack. And so we have a tendency to do less than we would and exert less effort when we're in a group than we would otherwise. And that happens more for some people than, than others, of course. But um, there are a variety of, of causes of social loafing, a variety of reasons that people do it and, and fall into this trap. Um, one is equitable contribution. Um, if they feel like they don't have the opportunity to contribute in the same way that others do, or their contri contributions aren't being heard, aren't being recognized, aren't being valued, then then you may uh, see them engage in social loafing. Um, Submaximal goal setting. So as a group, if you just set your set the bar too low, people feel like you, they don't you don't need my help anyway to do this. So uh, I don't really need to put my full effort in and and uh, put that much effort in because we've set the bar so low. So you want to be sure you, your goal setting is optimal and, and at a, an appropriate level. Uh, sometimes it's because there's a lessened contingency between input and outcome. So uh, there's, there's less, you know, they feel like there's less going on between um, the input that, of the group and the outcome. Like the group has, you know, somewhat lessened input to how the, how things work out in the end anyway. Uh, a lack of evaluation. If they don't feel like they're being evaluated, people don't feel like they're being evaluated, um, then and and there's no uh, you know consequence for for loafing, then they may choose to do so. An unequal distribution of compensation. If they feel like others are being compensated uh, more than they are, not equitably, um, you know, forget equal, but looking for equity. If they, if they're not being compensated appropriately and they feel like others are, uh, but they're being undercompensated, um, then they may not work as hard. And just generally having a non-cohesive group. If your if your group is not cohesive, which is something we talked about in a previous video in, in creating that positive group climate, but if you don't have a cohesive group, then people just don't feel connected. They don't feel um, really compelled to get very involved. And so you, you start to see some uh, social loafing in those instances as well. So uh, as far as the effects of social loafing, wh what's the impact of social loafing? Well, just generally, if we look at it first as for groups, we see decreased output, we see dissatisfaction uh, among the members and with the members, and we see a creation of in-groups, meaning groups within your group. Uh, so clicks or groups within your group, and that's not uh, that's not always great for, for groups. Um, if it's not intentional, if it's not task-related, you don't want those in-groups. You want to be one cohesive group. So it can affect the group as a whole in those ways. It also affects individuals. Uh, individuals feel a lack of satisfaction with the, the social loafers themselves. And other people in the group will find that, that they feel a lack of satisfaction. They feel a lack of growth and a lack of esteem or accomplishment in relationship to the group uh, group's task and group work. So we see it affects both the groups as a whole and individuals in negative ways. So social loafing is just not, it's not great. It's not great. So what can we do? We confront the social loafer. We can confront that person. We can, we can take it to them um, in a variety of ways. We can, we, can, uh, we can bring this up with them in a variety of ways. Uh, the first would be a private consultation. I'd always recommend starting there. Pulling that person aside, having somebody that they do connect with from the group, pulling them inside and saying, look, it's clear you're not pulling your weight, and we need you to. We need you as part of this effort. Uh, but we're not getting your full effort, and that's obvious. So, you, but you can you can pull that person aside and do a private consultation. That's where I would start. Uh, you could also have a group discussion with this person. You know, bring it up amongst the entire group, have an open discussion among the group, and uh, and try and come up with some solutions there and through uh, through that whole group discussion. You could pull in your supervisor, or your super your superior, somebody who has uh, you know uh, authority over the members of that group or over the group itself, and uh, ask them to. Um, take on the, the social loafer and, and confront them about that. You could exclude the person. Eventually it may come to this. It may just get to 
we're just going to leave this person out. We're not going to bother. We're just going to, you know, basically kick them out of the group. And that's pretty extreme, but, but we can exclude that person if it comes to that. Uh, and either in conjunction with that, or even without that, we can just circumvent. If you don't have the power to kick that person out of the group, you can still engage in circumvention where you just reassign things. You basically just don't put anything on that person's plate. And, uh, and you really, if you basically you decide if they don't want to be a part of the group, if they're not going to contribute, then you just find other ways to get that work completed and you just kind of cast them off to the side. You know, you circumvent and work around that, or reassign the tasks and, and keep moving forward as a group. So that's what you do. That, those are some things you can do if you have a social loafer and you need to confront them. But what can we do before that, before we get to that stage to prevent social loafing? What can we do to kind of avoid the situation um, to begin with? Well, first we can write a team contract and really enforce that and hold people to that. We can create that charter for the team and lay out our expectations very clearly. Um, what will happen, what we expect of people and what happens if, if people are not performing uh, up to their, uh, to their uh, agreement. Right? So we can, we can look at that and we can write a contract uh, at the very beginning for the team. We can create appropriate group sizes, make sure that we have groups that are the appropriate size for the task so that people aren't, don't feel like, well, they don't really need me anyway. So there's not, you know, less work to go around than there are people. That's what you're trying to avoid. So, um, create groups with, with an appropriate size in mind. You can establish individual accountability. We can, you know, set up systems where we are holding people accountable, where we are um, stressing that to people and making it public knowledge within the group, who's responsible for what and at what, what stage and, and holding people individually accountable for those things then. We can specifically define a task. We can, we can get into the detail and make sure that uh, we have the, the nitty gritty down for what that person is expected to do and what's going to happen if it doesn't get done, what's going to happen if it does get done. We can create personal relationships with those people. That's a, that's a key factor too. People are going to be less likely to engage in social loafing if they feel like they have relationships within that group that are significant because they won't want to let, you don't want to let down your friends and you don't want to let down people that you like and that you respect. So uh, when we create those personal relationships, people are more inclined to avoid social loafing. They're more inclined to, to do um, what they should be doing. A few other things we can do to prevent social loafing. We can manage discussions, meaning we can um, make sure that we're pulling everybody in to that discussion, that we're, that we're getting everybody's input, that we're helping everybody feel involved. We can engage individuals. We can be intentional and specific about pulling them in if we, if we need to. So we can, we can, again, be intentional about that about making sure that we're, we're calling people in and call, asking for their input and things. We can highlight achievement and help people feel like their efforts are being seen and, uh, and, uh, and respected and, uh, and valued. So we can do that. And we can evaluate progress of individual group members. We can make sure that we're evaluating people so that people know that, uh, that that's happening. As we found out earlier, that's a, a you know, one of the things that contributes to social loafing is if there's no evaluation at all, if people know they're not being evaluated, then they're more inclined to feel like they can get away with social loafing. So we can evaluate progress as part of the group um, effort. Then. When we do these things, we're more inclined to see people who are um, engaged in a group, who are part of that group, who are putting their full effort in and not uh, and not engaging in social loafing, right? Because as the, um, the great philosopher Jean-Paul Sartre said, only the guy who isn't rowing has time to rock the boat. So we want to avoid social loafing because when you have somebody who's not rowing along with the rest of the group, then that's when you have the potential to have that person start rocking the boat. So we want to avoid that. We want to avoid uh, that, that type of uh, conflict and confrontation and that kind of social loafing and just nip it in the bud and help everybody feel engaged and part of the team. If you have questions about social loafing or other aspects of small group communication, please feel free to email me. I'd love to communicate with you that way. And in the meantime, I hope this has given you some insight into you know, the, the basics of social loafing, how, can, how we can prevent it, and then how we can confront it when it does happen.